Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Mr. Gove, you're a man with a dream. Exactly how many independent economic authorities share your dream of Britain outside the EU? Can you name a single one? Well, if you're talking about some of the independent economic authorities who've already weighed into the debate, they're people who've been wrong in the past. They're organisations, I'm afraid, that didn't predict the global crash in 2008, and they're the same organisations, in many cases, that also said that we should be inside the single currency. Oh, I mean, that was, they, that was some time ago. Can you name a single one? Well, well I, my point is that I'm glad that all these organisations are not on my side. You're I'm glad... glad that economic experts aren't on your side? Well, Margaret Thatcher said of economists, the great thing is that economists are fine, but you mustn't inhale. The truth is that I prefer, I prefer to take the view of business people who are actually generating jobs and creating wealth. The organisations that uh, many people are citing in this debate are organisations that have been wrong in the past and I think that they are wrong now. Just to clarify, in many but cases, not a single economic authority, independent economic authority, not a single one. Well, there are... We must have one. There are economists and there are business people who do back us. There are 300 business people who put their names to a letter in the Daily Telegraph. book agent? No, I'm talking about the 300 Where people... He's on that list. Well... <laughs> they're, not the... The, they're not the businesses that generate the jobs, apart from the jobs well, for... Douglas Carswell's book. Well, put, putting aside Douglas Carswell's book, which I'm sure is very good, the key thing is that of those 300 business people, you had some real business leaders who've, who have been making a huge a difference. Few. A minority, to... you would admit. No, I would say you that... You don't admit a minority. You've no, got a minority I, of business I people. I think that if you look at the business community, the genuine wealth creators in this country, organisations like JCB, which manufacture globally, organisations like Next... Though? We haven't heard which from are... uh, Mr Bamford. He's well, been a bit we shy. We Why would know that, that We know that he's in favour of you know. our leaving. Because Get him out to say hello to us. We Why know not? that if we vote to leave the European Union, then we can take control okay. of our economic destiny. Okay, well, so, and so... many of those, many of those organisations who've been cited so regularly as being in favour of our being um, in the European Union are organisations that have consistently made errors, okay. organisations that receive money in many cases from the European Union. They're not genuinely okay. independent. They're organisations with an not agenda and an, an agenda, agenda that's often been wrong. An agenda? OK, well, OK. Economic authorities, we've had none. Economists, singular, how many got? Well, uh, one of the things about economists, I as I mentioned it. earlier, okay. is that... Um, have, you got, have you got a football team's worth? No, <laughs> I'm sure we do. We've got, sure we got 600 on the Prime Minister's side, on the Remain side. Come on. Well, Give us 11, at least. When we had a debate on whether or not we should join the single currency, there were a majority of right. economists then yeah, so we're, who we're, were we're in we're... favour of the single currency. So many of the people who are arguing that we should remain in the European not Union now them. are the same people. And the arguments that they're making are that we should cede control right. of our economy, our trade and our money well, okay, to well, unelected and to um, unaccountable okay. individuals. Well, well, we'll My come, view is well, that we'll we should take that. back control yes, of our economy yes, I... because their argument is that we're better off if there are individuals who don't have our best interests at heart, dictating our future. Okay, well, my view is that we would be better off, and the majority of people in Britain, I believe, are on my side in this, yeah. we would be better off if we trusted the leaders of this country, accountable to people in this country, to spend money um, on our priorities like the NHS. OK, well, um, so you can't, say, you can't name uh, an economic authority, You're struggling to name more than a handful of economists. Can you name a single one of our international allies, the countries we've gone into battle with, who support you? Well, one of the things about um, some of the leaders of foreign countries is that um, uh, they would never accept... Can you name a single they one? They would never accept a curtailment of their sovereignty Any, in the way that they are arguing us, arguing that we should uh, curtail our sovereignty. Can you name a single one that backs your, you know, it's complicated things, we look for expertise, we look for experts, we look for our allies. They, they've got our back, they've had our back, we've gone into battle with these people, give me one. Well, one of the problems is that... You can't um, name one, can you? Well, one of the things I'll is... I'll give you a half for Donald Trump. You're going to count for Donald Trump? <laughs> one of the things about Donald Trump, one of the things about all of these people is they don't have a vote in this referendum. The people in this audience, the people watching at home, have a vote. And my view is, when you hear foreign leaders, when you hear politicians, don't pay attention to what they say, pay attention to what they do. And the truth is that Barack Obama would never accept 
a court in Mexico decreeing what the law in the United States would be. Barack Obama would never accept politicians in Latin America he, he, he accepts, saying what should happen in the United States of America. He accepts being part of NAFTA and NATO. But listen, the leaders, well, totally the, the leaders of the, 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 leader, well, the leaders of the and US, surrendering but sovereignty let's just look at way. this now. The leaders of the US, India, China, Australia, every single one of our allies, the Bank of England, the IFS, the IMF, the CBI, five former NATO Secretary Generals, the Chief Exec of the NHS, and most of the leaders of the trade unions in Britain all say that you, Boris, and Nigel are wrong. Why should the public trust you over them? I'm not asking the public to trust me. I'm asking the public to trust themselves. I'm asking the British public to take back control of our destiny from those organisations which are distant, unaccountable, elitist and don't have their, elitist, um, their own elitist, interests apart. Elitist. Absolutely. The because Lord in... High Chancellor. Uh, conspiracy of elites. It sounds like something like Wolf Hall. Well, I'm, I'm, I haven't seen Wolf Hall, but the one thing that I would say is that the people who are backing the Remain campaign are people who've done very well, thank you, out of the European Union, and the people increasingly... <laughs> absolutely. So there's a... So there's and, the a... People, and the people... The people who are arguing that we should get out are concerned to ensure that the working people of this country at last get a fair deal. I think the people in this country have had enough of experts with uh, organisations experts. from acronyms the people of this saying, country have had saying, enough of experts with, 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 from organisations with acronyms saying that they know what is best and the getting it consistently wrong. This because these people, these people are the same ones who've got consistently wrong. This is proper What's Trump politics, this, isn't it? No, it's actually it's, a faith in it's the Oxbridge Trump. <laughs> it's a faith, Faisal in the British people to make the blind, right decision. Blind face. I don't think it is, because one of the, uh, the striking things about this debate is that those who are arguing that we should remain have a vested financial interest ah, right. so, in the so operation are they of the lying, European are Union. Are they stupid or is there a conspiracy? There's a conspiracy. No, I'm pointing out that um, the majority of people in this country are suffering as a result of our membership of the European Union. Their wages the are lower. Of people. Yes, the their majority of people. Their wages are lower. 33 million Access people to public are services is what's restricted. Your, what's your factual and basis that... for that claim that 33 million people are suffering from EU membership? Well, we can you complain about you. the other side's figures. What's your factual basis to say the majority of people in this country are suffering from EU membership? Well, I you know myself. It, I know myself from my own background. I know that the European Union depresses employment and destroys jobs. We haven't, my got, father, a we haven't got a majority. My father had a fishing business in Aberdeen destroyed by the okay. European Union and the common fisheries policy. That's one person. The European Union has hollowed out communities across this right. country. We've and it has also contributed to lower salaries for working people and it has also ensured that young people in this country don't have the opportunities to get the entry-level jobs that we heard about last night. Right. Now, you can say that their concerns don't matter. I didn't you say can that. Dismiss I didn't the say concerns. that. I didn't dismiss you were, you were, it. I you were said, dismissing you said my a majority. father's example. I did not you were dismiss dismissing it. You the claimed that your father's example was You're on the side, Faisal, of the elites. I'm on the side of the people. You said a majority... You said a majority... You, you the Lord High Chancellor, said a majority of the British public was suffering from the EU. You yes. have no factual evidence for that whatsoever. Let me give you a fact. No, you don't have any evidence for it. Yes, because I then, do. Well, let's move because on. Every, every year we give billions of pounds to the European Union, billions of pounds that we should be spending here. Taxpayers are handing money over to the European Union ah, yes. so that it can be spent on Jean-Claude Juncker's expense account and his private jets right. rather than being spent on our well, NHS David and Cameron's our got a priorities. private jet as well now, hasn't he? David Cameron's got a plane. It's your, government, it's your government's policies that have directly contributed to some uh, uh, poorer people's loss of income. You've cut their benefits. Well, uh, uh, so, uh, so why are you not blaming that? You're blaming your... Like, all the problems in this country on Europe. That's I don't blame doing. all the problems of this country on Europe, but I do believe that million people that you Europe can't find a factual basis for, though. Well, I've already pointed out to you a number of facts which you uh, haven't denied. Well, okay, one well, of them. well let's have a fact. Let's have them. a fact. There's been a no, fact no, on the one side one of, of your bus in one metre tall letters, and let me quote, we send... £350 million to Brussels every week. Let's fund the NHS instead. Which week was it that we sent £350 million to Brussels? Was it this week? Last week? Was it Christmas week? Easter week? 
Which week? Every week we send actually more than three hundred and fifty million pounds to Brussels. We send we... it. So hang on. So it comes out of a bank account in Britain and, and goes yes, to does. Brussels. Does it literally leave the country? We yes, because if no, you look at the if you look at the Office of National Statistics report, they, the reports, they point out that we send more I've... than three hundred and fifty million pounds there. We don't send it. There. It doesn't leave the country. Yes, we do. Doesn't leave and the country. And then we get some of it back. It doesn't leave the and country. And we do get some of it you back. You know it doesn't leave the country. And it's, you don't listen to me. UK stats authorities say the figure is misleading. The Treasury Select Committee containing Brexiteers says it's deeply problematic. One of your own backbench colleagues, a Conservative MP who's campaigning to leave as a respected doctor, refuses to hand out leaflets because you say you're treating the public as fools. The fact is that we send more than £360 million to the European Union. We send We're £20 billion pounds gross a year. We get some money back. But the money that we get back, the rebate, we cannot count on. The rebate is decided yeah. At a European level, right. it's not in the treaties, it's not a guarantee, and as the Chancellor of the Exchequer has pointed out, that rebate can be altered to our disadvantage. Aaron, Aaron Banks, successful businessmen, poured many hundreds of thousands of pounds into donations into your side, said on social media this week about that number on your bus, it's not smart to lie. It's not smart to lie, is it? Absolutely not, but I'm telling the truth. Aaron Banks says about you're lying. The, well, I, 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 Aaron Banks can say Aaron what he Banks likes. Aaron Banks funded UKIP's manifesto took an assessment of this figure at the general election last year and got it independently audited, and it was half what you say. It was nine billion, not 19 billion. Is the gross... Would you independently audit your figure? Let the CEBR in. Uh, Why don't we do uh, is, that? Is, is... Why don't we do that? Well, Why I'm, don't you I'm, independently I'm, per audit? I'm perfectly happy Let's to have... the same people that ordered the UK I'm manifesto perfectly... to audit your number. I'm perfectly happy, perfectly happy to, to defend the figure because no, it is a fact. No, should we get the independent fact. auditor in? It's a real so... figure. Which, get... uh, which is already we've already well, had. Know. People the will Office decide for themselves. People will decide that. themselves that you won't allow an independent audit of your figure that was done to UKIP on your own side. Well, firstly, I'm not a representative stuff. of UKIP. <laughs> Secondly, I'm happy to have that figure independently <laughs> they, they audited. Were, they were on this Thirdly, side. You're a Johnny come lately compared and to UKIP. I think UKIP. the most important point here is we don't have control of that money. There are billions of pounds that we send to the European Union every year. And the Institute for Fiscal Studies has pointed out that if we took that money back, we could spend it on our NHS. The IFS we could use it did to not back your number. The, the IFS said there'd be a 40 fuel. billion hole in your bank. You know that. Don't quote the IFS. You're the great defender, well, I'll, I'll you're the great defender exactly of Westminster like democracy, myself. but you're willing to repeat this misleading figure. You've imported this Trump campaign to the mother of all parliaments. Post-truth politics. That's well, what you're doing. No, because um, if you look at the, uh, uh, every reputable uh, record of how much money we spend to the European Union, it is £20 billion gross, just over half of that in a net sum. So that means that there are billions of pounds, you can't deny it, Faisal, neither can anyone else, that are spent on our behalf by people who are unaccountable, yeah. unelected, and whom we can't get rid of. I think we should take back don't control you. of that money. I think, I think that money should come back here. And also, I think it is wrong of you to say that people who want our democracy restored and who believe that Britain should be a self-governing nation are people following in the footsteps of Donald Trump. It is that sort of sneering condescension towards people who believe in democracy that discredits those I, on the Remain side of the I campaign. Have said, all I have said is it's the way... It's, it's your attitude to facts. It's your attitude to facts. Well, you, it looks like... According to one on your a leading figure of your own side, you've misrepresented the cost of the EU. So let's look at the actual cost of leaving. What would you say to someone in this audience who works in manufacturing cars, for example, who could lose their job because of your Brexit dreams? I think that uh, the truth about the European Union is that it is a job-destroying machine. And anyone who's working in manufacturing here should know that they will have increased opportunities if we leave the European Union, because we'll have an opportunity to forge new trade deals with other countries, oh, we'll with China, trade India we'll and America. We'll come on to the trade more than that, more than that, working people in this country have lower wages as a result of our membership of the European Union. You quoted Aaron Banks. Let me quote the leader of the campaign that wants to keep us in, Stuart Rose. He said that wages would rise if we left the European Union. Mm. So, more jobs, higher wages, and a stronger manufacturing base if we choose to leave. Fundamentally, the risk to the jobs won't affect you as Lord High Chancellor, will it? That's, that's the issue. You're willing to take a risk with other people's jobs, but it won't... It's not a risk on your job. If you, if you heard earlier, Faisal, um, I know what it's like to see someone lose their job as a result of the European Union. 
I saw my father lose his job. I saw his business go to the wall. I saw 24 people whom he employed. Well, listen, I've seen also, my father leave my job. You're not unique. You're not, you're, not, you're, not, you're not unique in that, Mr. Gove. Plenty no, but of people I, but here I, not, will have seen it too. I'm you have no special moral authority because I'm absolutely of that. not Does your unique. Dream, you want to I take an experiment with other people's jobs. I am one of many who have seen their parents or seen their friends lose their jobs, lose their income and lose their livelihood as a result of the European Union. Do not skate over their misery. Don't dismiss the pain that they've had. Don't belittle you have, you the hurt not, that has been caused proven, by the job-destroying machine that is have, the European Union. You don't Union. have the facts also, to prove that. Also, look at the facts of unemployment in southern Europe. Yep. Youth unemployment in Greece is nearly 50%. In Spain, it's 40%. Yep. Now, these are facts, and these facts are also a story of human misery. Yes. All those who yes, are arguing out of the that we should stay we're in the European the, Union, the but there's we're a direct consequence for us, we're because those jobless young people yeah. in Greece and Spain who are suffering so much as a result of Europe yeah. are coming here okay. in order to put pressure we're, on jobs We're going to come on to that. Just, and that means, we're, we're as we heard about, last night, yeah. that young people in this country yeah. face a tougher we're future. We're going to come on to that. Now, you come can't deny any of those facts. We're going to come on to that. We're going to come on to that. Does your dream come with a guarantee that when the UK leaves the single market, which is your idea, the biggest free trade zone in the world, it won't cost any jobs. Can you guarantee that? Um, I can't guarantee every person currently in work in their current job will keep their job, but I can After say... Brexit. I can so, so say... Who, who's going to lose their job? Say, who's well, going to lose their job? Well, the 73 members of the European Parliament will be losing their job. <laughs> yeah. but our European Commissioner will be losing their job. And, and as far as I'm concerned, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I wish them well in the private sector. Jamie Dimon in Jamie Dimon in Britain today said Brexit would mean fewer J.P. Morgan jobs in the UK and more jobs in Europe. Biggest American bank. Why do you know more about Jamie Dimon's job plans than he does? Uh, Jamie Dimon and J.P. Morgan are contributing millions to the in campaign because they do very nicely thank you out of the European Union. Banks like J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs. Okay. said that Greece could enter the euro, and they knew that that was wrong. Banks like JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs spend millions lobbying the European Union in order to rig a market in their favour. Did, did you, did you I back, am did you not interested... Their, did you back blocking the EU trying I'm, to limit bonus no, I, I'm, I'm, not interested um, in defending, you, I'm not interested in defending bankers' positions. You defended against Europe trying I did to not. have bonus caps. I mean, extraordinary no, stuff. No, others did. I did not. Look at because the Because I'm not interested. I'm not interested in defending the position of, the government of those that. who already have money, did power and privilege. Did you stand up in Cabinet to that I am interested in attacking those to that decision? I explained to my cabinet colleagues that we should not be on the side of the undeserving rich. We should be on the side of those who so strive... So you tried to block, who you tried to to block put... the EU bonus limitations I've made it, on I've made it clear on, on every platform that I've been given that we have in the European Union a market rigged in favour of the rich okay. and stacked against right. the poor. Well, let's talk about that. Let's, I think let's, that is wrong let's and look at the value. change. Let's look at the value of the pound. That matters to everybody in the United Kingdom. All 33 million you talk about. The Bank of England says it will fall, perhaps sharply, to quote them, if we leave, vote to leave. The Treasury says it will fall by 12 to 15 per cent. City economists say 20 per cent. What is your prediction about how much sterling will fall if we vote to leave as you want? Well, there was one economics commentator I was listening to last night, you, Faisal, who said that the pound rises, the pound falls, but Britain is a strong country and that it will see its way through. And my what own I view said, is... What I said yesterday was a matter for the Prime Minister. I'm asking you what you think... <laughs> what you think... Oh, so were you not telling the truth I yesterday? I was asking the Prime Minister a question. <laughs> and you're trying to avoid talking about economics. I am talking... you do not have an well, economic I'm citing, plan. I'm Will citing, you tell me I'm how, citing... much is the ster... how much do you think sterling is going to fall, or not at all? Well, Faisal, what, that, that's very interesting. You said that yesterday you said something in which you didn't believe, and then you accuse me of Donald Trump post-truth politics. I, I think... I was pointing out... I was pointing... I think, I I think there was an inconsistency view. there. I was pointing out... I thought out. the argument you made last night was very good. If you don't want to stand by it, then I'm very sorry about that. Um, I was asking a question... I was asking a question... Uh, well, the pound's already falling. I mean, the truth is, you have this dream, but you've got no credible plan. Despite having years to prepare for this, you still haven't come up with a coherent idea of what comes next in terms of our trade. Yes, I do. And, in fact, um, it's perfectly clear what we would do if we voted to leave the European Union. Perfectly clear. The day afterwards, we could um, pass legislation or introduce legislation which would limit the power of the European Court. That would mean that this country was safer because we could uh, keep out criminals and kick out terrorists. And we could also take some of the money back that multinationals refuse to pay because they use European Union law in order to evade right. the British tax trade, trade authorities. Deals. And then 
we could move on to have not just a free trade and friendly cooperation arrangement with other European Union countries. A free countries, trade and friendly cooperation arrangement? We could also have what trade deals. Well, does, does that exist? Is that an organisation? Does it have a headquarters? Have you just made it up? No, because um, we have a free trade zone at the moment in Europe, which it's stretches from Iceland to Istanbul. Is this an organisation? Does it have a website? Um, uh, no, but... Um, it doesn't have a website, so it doesn't exist. Well, let's move on. <laughs> well, let's Faisal, move on. You're Faisal, saying, I you're don't, saying a Faisal, you you're don't saying... need to have a website in order to exist. Um, I think that... <laughs> I think that, I think, I think that, the, I think that I most people in this audience don't have their own personal website. I don't doubt that they exist. The key thing is that there is no reason why any European country would want to erect trade barriers with Britain, particularly we will when, get an inferior particularly deal. when uh, Germany sells more to us than we sell to them. Yes, well, I know those, you I know those, I know those you facts. Your dream, more facts on our side, yes. Your dream, you your dream is Faisal? built on the idea we'll get world-beating trade deals, 52 of them, in world record time, Every expert, head of every government, including our own, says it's not possible. But you're asking people to risk their jobs on the promise of you, Boris and Nigel. I mean, you must have some super secret negotiator in your back pocket. Is, is it Boris, secret weapon? He's certainly got a unique diplomatic style. Well, um, Boris is wonderful, but I don't so, need to... He seems to insult the leader of the free world on the basis uh, well, 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 of... Well, I thought what? you wanted to ask me about trade. Let, let's talk about no, no, trade. No, no, do you bat Boris? China about them. has a trade deal with Switzerland. And it has a trade deal with Iceland, but right. it doesn't have a trade deal with the European Union. Iceland has a population smaller than Croydon. Right. Canada's, how, Canada's trade deal took seven years. No, no, no. You, but but how could Iceland, you. how could Switzerland get trade deals with China when the European it's Union can't? It's the best can't? possible trade deal. Because the European Union is a big, bureaucratic and unwieldy organisation that cannot forge new trade deals. Individual <laughs> countries can, but more than that. The Germans aren't going to cut off their nose to spite their face. We heard from people in the audience last night who pointed out that German car manufacturers and washing machine manufacturers are not going to say to Angela Merkel, please make it more difficult for us to sell to Britain. Okay. They're well, absolutely this is, this, not. This is about... And you can't deny that it would be in the self-interest of sure, those countries. I'm, I'm sure and it's really done, important it's when it comes to trade that we should take back control. Okay, at but... the moment, at the moment, our trade deals are dictated by one individual who's arguing on behalf of 28 countries. I think yeah. trade in this country should be shaped okay. by one individual whose interest is you, British jobs. Do you, have, do you have good judgment? Do you have good judgment, Mr Gove? Do you have good foresight? Uh, I don't know. Let's remind the audience who described the Iraq war as that rarest of things, a proper British foreign policy success five years after the invasion. You're keen to say other people were wrong then and wrong now. People entitled to say the same about you? Uh, yes, they are. They can point out that uh, 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 I may have called the Iraq War wrong, but, but, I'm very happy to acknowledge my mistake then. It's the invincible arrogance of Europe's elites that gets me. These are people who have seen the Euro collapse. These are people who are presiding over a migration crisis on their borders. And yet, do they ever acknowledge that they need to change? No. They say they need more integration, more of our money, more control over this country. I think it's time that we said to people who are incapable of acknowledging that they've ever got anything wrong, I'm sorry, you've had your day. Unelected, unaccountable elites, I'm afraid it's time to say you're fired. We're going to take back control. Thank you, Lord High Chancellor.